Hey guys, thanks for jumping on board another episode of The Wealthy Coach. I'm Wayne Sutton, the coach's coach, here with here with the rogue teacher. I'm excited about this today because I'm so excited about this, Josh, about having you on here because every every one of my coaches that I train and help, I'm like, you need a course. Even if you're not going to sell the course separate, you need a course inside your coaching. So it's a portal for your information. It's something that you can extend. And, and um, hey, this oh, yeah. I think what two billion courses. I'm making that number up, but it's probably two billion courses in the world today. How you know? I oh, want yeah. to find I want some secrets today, man. So uh, for our guests, for our people that are watching us, all of our coaches, uh, I want to introduce to you Josh Brown, the Rogue Teacher. And Josh, thank you for jumping on. Uh, thanks for jumping on today with us. So uh, well, thanks for having me. Super excited. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I love working with coaches. So. Definitely, good. I'd love to be here. Good, good. Well, let me ask you. I always like to take. You know, we always got to have that uh, that uh, backstory. What was it that made you decide? How did you get into the to being that teacher where you're helping people create courses? And to give us a little backstory, I know we're going to get into the the tactics and stuff, and I'm excited about that. But a little bit about you, if you would. Well, um, I am now a coach, of course, here helping coaches build courses and consulting with them. And my backstory is kind of unique in that area in that I was actually a teacher for a decade. Um, and I have a master's degree in education. I was actually what was called a career and technical education teacher. I taught video production, graphics, photography, communication systems. Um, I even taught shop actually, which um, still have all my fingers on like a lot of shop teachers. <laughs> That's um, good. That's good. I know when, um, yeah. but um, and I got into teaching because I loved facilitating knowledge and um, I loved having the win for my students. But, you know, a couple of years ago, I just started getting burned out. Honestly, anybody knows the education system is wholly broken, um, the public school education system. And I wanted to grow something that my son could grow into and have revenue that you just can't do on a salary. Because we all know the only way to have unlimited wealth is being an entrepreneur. And I wanted to put the two together. So oh, I started looking at where I could come in and I started looking at all these different businesses when I was trying to leave teaching. I looked at, you know, all the, I literally Googled how to make money online when I was leaving it. And I started <laughs> noticing, yeah, literally it was like, and I started noticing something that I think everybody's so, Googled that. Yeah. Everybody's Googled every, that at some point. At some point. <laughs> Yeah. And have been met by some really, really sleazy coaches. Um, oh, absolutely. But, absolutely. but uh, I, so I started looking at all of them and I did as an academic does and a researcher like me, I started taking some other, I started taking some courses and hired some coaches and I started realizing, first of all, it, by 2025, it's going to be a $325 billion industry. Wow. I mean, that's B with a billion, like huge. That's a lot of and <laughs> yeah, per year. And that's only here in the U S. Um, mm -hmm. and, but everybody's making courses, but there was nobody who was actually an experienced educator team people how to do it. That's why there's single digit completion rates and continuity is abysmal. And I mean, if I was a teacher and I only had 10% of my room can finish my course or pass it, I would have been fired. And these people are paying you to give them a course and it's so bad, they're not finishing it. And so, here's the weird, yeah. No, and no, I was going to ask you, yeah. about, if I may, and if I may interject, mm -hmm. is it, and I, I've often looked at this too, because I look at all of my students, I look at the course completion. Uh, I've set up some parameters and, you know, some things to hopefully mm -hmm. increase that. But do you think the reason they, don't they don't finish you know, like you said 10 percent complete do you think it's um more of the course is that bad or they maybe they found another shiny object to jump to or or mm -hmm. what, what do you think is the main it's, reason somebody doesn't finish a course it's and i know a whole bunch of people's egos just took a hit because i said it was so bad from a crafting standpoint mm -hmm. because here's the thing i have rarely run across a coach that was not building a course with the best intent. They yeah. want their yeah. students to win. So all the people are just like, deck with that rogue teacher guy. Hey, <laughs> I understand you guys are, you're building under best intent, but it's like saying, well, 
They went the best antenna of my car, but the wheels fell off. No, you still have to know the mechanics, just like Absolutely. the mechanics of building a course. Why do you think corporate America spends billions of dollars on instructional designers, curriculum consultants, and instructional leads? Because they know something. They know the money is in the actual um, structure of what you're doing. Mm. So a big part of that is the structure of the course is made, the way it's actually filmed, and the follow-up. Because a lot of times it's just sold and then it's just left up to them. That's There's it. no motivation. That's it. Yeah. That's it. It's all of a sudden course here. I collect my stripe payment and we're done. Which yeah. for a low ticket or something like that's fine. But you can still nurture them automatically to encourage them. So that that's where a lot of it comes in. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, nurturing. So, and, and again, you don't have to you know, reveal all your magic here. But if you'll reveal a little bit. Oh, <laughs> so if I've created a course and somebody, yeah, I got a strike payment. Here's my 200, here's my thousand, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe in how maybe an automated email sequence or text message 100%. sequence? That, okay. So mm -hmm. I know on one of our yeah. courses, we drip it out once a week. And then every six days, we have an automated email and yeah. text message that says, hey, you should have finished module one. What was your biggest takeaway? Um and I saw a huge jump in engagement from literally 20% to over 80% just by doing that. Yeah. Um, but I still, even at 80% engagement, I don't see 80% completion, which is, again, yeah. where, where, where can we add in? To, so I'm glad that that's something that you'd recommend mm -hmm. because having a course, is, like you're right, if you've got a life change in information here that or people using it and... And I think that's where uh, I, well, I was really excited to have you on today. It really was. Yeah. And, and I'm excited to share the message because it, that what happens is when people don't realize all of these different pieces are going on is that they're missing on continuity and they're missing on all of those students becoming Pied Pipers and literally mm -hmm. telling their friends about it. At least 50% of my clients are literally from referrals. That's amazing. That's amazing. No, at like, I don't know about you, but my favorite clients are the ones I don't have to pay to acquire. Oh, yeah. Because um, they're already warm and they've, you've already had the social proof built into it. You just have to tell them what you do, see if you're a good fit, and then start working with them. And what you said with your email follow up, you're already in the, you know, top percentage of course creators. You actually have a follow up. Um, the yeah. other thing with that is because that nurtures them. The other thing is, is that some of the CR, some of the learning management platforms out there are able to remind people, hey, don't forget to hop back in and take a look at this. I got one and of those even, reminders this morning. Yep. <laughs> yep. Course, like, hey, you're forgetting something, you know. You're 13% so like, through. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, right. exactly. Um, so that's a big help. The other thing is, particularly if you have like a VA or something like that, just give a quick reach out. Hey, how are you doing on the course? You know, and actually oh, instead of an automated, point. you know, it's point. really easy just for have a VA start at the bottom, go down like, Hey, Oh, you're stuck on that. Hey, try this. Like those types of things add a lot to it. The other thing is you have to constantly remind them why they're in it and what the end result is of doing it. Mm. I mean, I can't tell you how many courses I've seen that literally can change that person's business like 180 from where it's going and all they have to do is finish it. And then they glom onto something else. They glom on something else because they just aren't staying in it. And a lot of that is just dealing with the um, overload of the information too, because it's not in a digestible format. Okay. So I'm glad you said that digestible format. So an hour long video is not good. I mean, we joked about that. No. Of course. <laughs> yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah. An hour long video should be broke down into, I was really excited the other day. I've got one video in a course that's like an hour and 20 minutes long and I, it's hosted through Vimeo and Vimeo now does chapters. I'm like, yes, I don't even have to cut it. I can just do different chapters. Yeah, but, <laughs> exactly. When? But the, yeah. I don't have to redo all this or just, but the point is I, I agree with that because I, lo I know a lot of times I'll go back into a course. I want to pick up, one topic. I want to go back. What did they say about building backlinks for this SEO? And I don't want to watch an hour and a half. I'm not going to watch an hour and 20 minute video. No. And I think that's real important too. Um, I tell people whenever we're, um, 
I'm helping them, you know, I help people write books. And I said, you know, there's something I've learned a long time ago from strong publications. A 150 page book is ideal for a number of 150, 170 pages. Mm -hmm. And here's why. If you've got um, Tools of the Titans by Ferris, it's this big. I mean, it's, I look at it and I'm like, wow. Later, oh, I had, I had it I, over there somewhere. It's downstairs. Yeah, it's over there. Yeah, I yeah, slide it over because I'm like, it's too big. And the reason, oh, yeah. and, and, and who was strange publications behind it? And I'm not saying Tim don't know what he's doing. Obviously, he does. But here, where 150, 170 pages is great. And I think with video and, and courses, it's digestible because somebody and strange said that somebody that is really intelligent, really fast going, a lot of going on, they'll look at a big book and go, I don't have time for that. But yeah. they look at a small book that's 20 pages and go, there's nothing there for me. And so yeah. they want something they know is digestible and good. And somebody that really doesn't read a lot will look at a huge book and go, never. <laughs> so yeah. you've got to keep it that 150, 170. And I think in courses, I think there's a, something valuable, you said, digestible. So is it digestible just by the length of the video? Or is there other ways to make it more digestible, in, in your opinion? Yeah, well, th this really dives into one of the three tactics that I use. And the first tactic is what I call the YouTube effect. And the YouTube mm -hmm. effect is, think about the last time you went to YouTube and you're trying to pick out a video. What's the length of all of them? About 11 minutes. Yeah, Simply because yeah. that's where you hit the point where you can do more ads in your videos. Um, but also it's because... Google is smart. Google owns YouTube, so they're pretty smart. Um, and that is the cap on most people's cognition and and also their memory recall is, for an adult, absolutely max at about 15 minutes. For most mm. people, it's even down to nine minutes. So if you think about it, if you're doing an hour video, the last that 45 minutes, they're only remembering about yeah. less in single digits. Which is what TED Talks are probably, I think, what, 17, 18 minutes max. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's one of the right. big ones. The YouTube effect. That's a good one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, because awesome. the way I look at it is last time, think about the last time you went to YouTube. And I tell everybody to do this. Go to YouTube and click through the videos. Tell me you pick one that's over 20 minutes. No. Uh, no. You, two, that's a commitment to spend 20 minutes. Like I'm not, mm -mm, no, right. <laughs> I'm not doing that. No, I, I, but, I heard someone the other day tell me that, Hey Wayne, I, I love your videos. Um, it, when we used to do a two minute persuasion tips, I love them. Cause in two minutes and I use, I talk a lot. So it was usually five minutes, but <laughs> two minute persuasion yeah. tips, they can grab something they can go with it and they can move on, you know, and exactly. And that's, I think that's right. So YouTube effect, that's yeah. a great, great tip. Mm -hmm. Um, which there like is this. some slight thing with like podcast or a little bit of a different animal because people are having a dialogue with them. They love that. So like, but if you're delivering deep content, that's, that's really where you need that limit because like this is pulling out nuggets. So like a podcast can be longer. People are expecting me look at Joe Rogan. Some of his are three hours long. Yeah. You know, and, and, and but yeah, podcast I'll put on and I'll go to the gym. I'll yes. have in the background playing. Um, and you know, I'm really being just indoctrinated and listening. I'm just listening. I'm not intent. Um, mm -hmm. But there's also times when I know, Hey, I've got a seven minute drive to this office. I think I'll pop in a podcast. I'm not gonna pull on Joe Rogan. I'm a bit in something else. That no. I <laughs> so uh, exactly. So the YouTube effect. Can you give us another, what's another tactic you would recommend for somebody that to make a course extraordinary. <laughs> well, the big thing a lot of people forget is they lose the personality of hiring you at the sale. So for mm -hmm. example, with a lot of people, what happens is, is they, everybody knows in marketing, you are selling as much the solution as you are, you as the coach, right? Because yeah. they're hiring you, you know, and that's one of the most common things when clients work with me is they say, I'm hiring you. I'm picking sure, you. I get that. I hear that a lot. Yeah. 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 And I mean, because I can see it with you, but like your personality just like draws people in. And because when they're hiring a coach, they're, not also, they're hiring your tactics, but also what you do. So part of what happens a lot of time is you build a course and then all of a sudden it's just pure content. They're not getting understanding of what you are and what you do and why. And there's a balance, though. You get a lot of those coaches that spend 45 minutes telling them a backstory, then five minutes of actually how to do it. 
<laughs> yeah, you want to give yeah. them snippets of what, what happened in your, in your life and like, um, you know, information, like for example, in, in my course about, um, and I t started talking about, um, course building and like the example I gave on short information, most people, college courses, schools, all of that, even corporate training, when I've done that, they give you these 90 minute blocks and I'm not going to lecture for 90 minutes. Yeah. So what I do is I give, and like the example I gave for this, like my video production class, this is the exact example for my course. And this is the exact length. So, okay. The reason why you break up your course is that an example when I was, a, when I was teaching in an actual classroom is I'll give 10 to 15 minutes of lecture, 10 to 15 minutes of application. And then I go back and those are only three or four actionable items. Then I give 15 minutes of the next step, 15 minutes of action, 15 minutes of lecture, 15 minutes of application, because it mentally resets you to consume information again. So you go from a learning phase to an application phase. And in 90 mm -hmm. minutes, you can still get the same information across as lecturing for 90 minutes straight. That oh, took, amazing. what, 90 seconds to explain? <laughs> and now the person's like, oh, okay, this works. I'm going to listen to this guy. Yeah, and I think that's really good, too, is letting them know ahead of time, this is how we're going to do it. It kind of frames, mm -hmm. preframes what pre we're going to go into. Yes. And preframe is huge. Uh, uh, I'm a minister, and, and one of the things in seminary they taught was you had an introduction, you had three mm -hmm. points, and then you had a, a close. Until I read a book by Andy Stanley called Communicating for a Change, and he said have one point. One point. Now, there's a way of bringing it through application and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's really having one point. And that's what I try to do when I'm teaching somebody. We're going to focus on this one point with one mm -hmm. statement, one analogy, one metaphor, whatever they can take home with them so they can change, mm -hmm. not just receive information, transformation on information. And, I'm, yes. you know, this is why I'm excited about having you on here because I know so many, I know so many people that are using you know, coaching or hoping to do a course and then their course doesn't sell or maybe their course, nobody really talks about it. And it's easier to sell a customer again than sell them once. So we want them to finish yeah. the course. Um, so let me ask you then, uh, based on that, when you, you help somebody create a course, do you also help with the marketing? Is that, or do you help them find their ideal avatar or is that something they do before they create the course? I'm just curious how you help somebody. With, if somebody were to hire you say, Hey, I got this idea for a course. Um, do you help them with the marketing or finding the ideal market? Yeah, I, I look at two very different things because for me, when the mission I came in is, is revolutionizing, improving the content, the person delivers. So I have some okay. clients that already have a client base, they're already selling or they're already coaching and they need just the course absolutely Interior. to home yeah. run, or they're consulting with me to reboot parts of that. And unfortunately I would, I would do the ever popular um, name drop thing, but I can't because I'm on NDAs, but let's just say I've worked with some seven figure CEO, CEO type of people, you know, owner business owners to work with their content because they realize the same thing. The course needs to be better to stand out in 2020 and beyond when everybody's okay. building something, you got to step it up and be better or you're going to yeah. get lost. So okay. I, I've worked with those in that aspect. Or if you have a brand new coach or a consultant, somebody who wants a technical skill to teach somebody, I work with them from idea through delivery. And I also mm -hmm. work with them depending on what they're coming in with a war chest. Because like, for example, there's there's two very separate, um, there's two separate houses, whether you're going to go paid traffic or if you want to do organic growth. Both work. Yeah. I've been, yeah. I've, I've worked with coaches that literally have in their first seven figure years, one went organic, one went paid. Same yeah. result. Glad it's you just, said that. Yeah. yeah. It's whatever you are feel comfortable with. And also what your bank account can take as well. That is whether you have more time or you have more money, which one? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that's very a good point you said, because sometimes I'll say, people say, Wayne, I can only do organic because I don't have the account, the money mm -hmm. to do Facebook ads. But the problem is, they're still running through that money building their business. Sometimes they need to take that money and get in Facebook ads and, and, and increase the revenue mm -hmm. and the revenue. And that's where you got to work with a coach or somebody to understand. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Organic or mm -hmm. paid. And I really, I like a blend of both. I teach both Same inside here. the wealthy coach, but we only teach inside the wealthy coach a blend of both when they can afford to do both. 
Uh, mm -hmm. If somebody will buy your product organically, they'll buy it with paid ads. If somebody oh, yeah. won't buy it with paid ads, they may not buy it organically. So I think yeah. uh, what I love about paid advertising is you can test an offer really quick. And then mm -hmm. you can go back and you can, you know, obviously go back and check out the offer. Um, so, okay. So um, I want, I don't want to miss anything. I want all of the people to grab a hold of this. One of the things that you said um, was the YouTube effect, which is huge. Number two, uh, keeping the personality of you inside of it. What's another tactical trick or, or oh, I don't want to say trick, but something that tactic people can mm -hmm. go from ordinary to extraordinary. What's, an, what's one more that you could leave us with? The other big thing, and this is one that's that a lot of people are resistant on, and that is quality in your course counts. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking not only in what you're delivering, but technically it should live up to the price point. And I've personally bought courses and I've spent $1,000 on it and it's nothing but slide deck and voiceover and things like that. And a couple of years ago, even up through earlier this year, that was kind of the standard. But if you yeah. look at the top sellers that people are using that as the gold standard, they're taking the time to build things like, when I build a course, I always have myself on screen along with my slide deck. Yeah. Before good. it used to be yeah. one of those things that was really hard to do because of literally technical things. Like if you would yeah. have to edit yourself in, you had to do a multi-camera setup. But with all the software out there, and it's something I actually teach to my students, you can do it with software now. And literally it sure. takes the same length of time. That also, by the way, ties into the continuing them to build a relationship with you. They see how energized you are and love it. It's just like them kind of being on a guided podcast or that yeah. they see you and they're like, okay, that you're really getting involved with it. And they see your mannerisms and all of those things. Then it's more like a dialogue than just getting lectured to. Um, totally. So that's, that's, awesome. a, that's a big one. And take the time to over deliver what you're giving them in their course. Because like if the video quality is better, give them supporting documents that are going to help them along the way. And I'm not saying give up the farm. I'm just saying like make sure what you give them and you commit the promise to them lives up to that expectation because it drove me nuts as I did hear a couple of coaches say, you know, you know, and it's a balance. Like all these people are like imperfect action, imperfect action. And like, yeah, don't worry if you stutter in your video, but if it looks like it was recorded in 1999 <laughs> and it's two hours of audio, just you lecturing, that's a problem. <laughs> you need to readdress that. Yeah. And I, I tell a lot, and, and, and we'll maybe talk about this at a later time, and this could be absolutely wrong, but a lot, I tell a lot of my coaches, if you're going to offer a course, offer, uh, if, if you're going to offer lifetime access to it, let them know that. If you're going to offer, hey, this is going to be, you buy the course, you have access to the portal, but also updates. If you tell somebody, hey, we're going to have lifetime mm -hmm. updates, I update this at least every 90 days at least portion of the course, mm -hmm. it causes you, number one, to go in there and say, does this look like crap? Is this old data? Is this been, you know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, you know, Periscope and I should be talking about, you know, Snapchat or something, you know, and also by offering it as lifetime updates, you've got another great reason to reach out to all of your client base. Hey, we just updated module three, you mm -hmm. know, and, and and get back into that engagement because there's so yeah. many people pulling for the same audience. Um, yeah, I do the yeah, same thing awesome. too, and, I, and that's that is a great way of re-engaging an audience. That's awesome, man. I, I'm going through our notes here, and, and you know, for time's sake, again, we we, we know people's attention span. We talked about it. I could talk to you for hours. Yep. Uh, but same I want here. people to, people to be able to reach out to you. So jkbrownofficial.com. Uh, that's the website. That's correct. That's the best place for them to reach yep. out to you at. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. In fact, if you swing by that website, you can get a free copy of my epic lesson formula. It's the nine step proven technique to take, whether it be your course lessons, um, Facebook live group trainings, whatever to the next level. Um, and it's scientifically awesome. proven to do so. That is amazing. That's amazing. So guys, check it out. I want to say again, thanks, Josh. I mean, I could talk on and on about this, uh, but, uh, for the sake of the time of the podcast, we're going to, uh, you've gave so much information. If somebody just took the free information you gave here and they go to your website, they're going to be doing a lot better. 
And um, thank you. Thank me, you very my, much. Team, my team's going to be going through our material as well. So, <laughs> hey, guys, if this is your – again, check them out again, J.K. Brown Official. Also, if you have not gone to our website and checked out our case study, be sure to jump over there. I want to be able to give you the information that you need as well. If you're a coach or consultant, part-time, going to full-time, um, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you do that exactly that. So how to sell coaching.com when you're there, fill out the form, check out the case study and grab a hold of the information we have. It'll lead you to our website, which all our blogs, articles and so much. Um, Josh, thank you again. Uh, really, really do appreciate you jumping on board. Um, man, this is, this has been very helpful to me. I know it's been helpful to our coaches and, uh, thanks again. Thanks for having me on anytime. Absolutely.